Remarks at the Lincoln Memorial March on Washington, August 28, 1963, by Matthew Allman, Executive Director, National Catholic Conference for Interracial Justice. Where is a man, white or negro, whose heart has not been touched by the revelation in past months of racial sores among the people of our country? Where is a man so callous that in some deep way his conscience has not yet been moved to see the evil effects of racial discrimination and segregation upon both the Negro and the white man? Who can call himself a man, say he is created by God, and at the same time take part in a system of segregation which destroys the livelihood, citizenship, family life, and very heart of the Negro citizens of the United States of America? Who can call himself a man and take part in a system of segregation which frightens the white man into denying what he knows to be right, into denying the law of his God? The wind of racial revolution has finally bent the reeds of the conscience of our people. Never before has the direction we must take been so clear. Yet many bend before the wind of justice in confusion, the balance yet lies in the silent and fearful American. It is he who sees the direction of the future dimly before his conscience, who must act if a wholesome integrated community of Negro and white Americans is to be built without violence and without rending this country's spirit. We are gathered a long one hundred years after Lincoln declared slavery at an end in the United States. Yet slavery is all too close to us as we demonstrate for equality and freedom today. We live together in a country which has shown a remarkable capacity for social change, an ability to absorb people from all over the world, and produce out of their unified efforts a strong economic order, glistening ideals, an ability to offer its spirit, its resources, its sons, for the freedom of all mankind. Yet, we have tolerated a great blind spot. We have permitted evil, racial discrimination to remain with us too long. The United States of America is a country which produced the Marshall Plan, helped resurrect the spirit and economy of Europe with great dedication and billions of dollars. We have come to the aid of the refugees of the world. What man can say that this great country, with its democratic ideals, its vital and resilient spirit, its sophisticated resources, cannot bring an abrupt end to racial discrimination at home, and within a decade or two end the disability under which for so long so many of our Negro citizens have labored. We dedicate ourselves today to secure federal civil rights legislation which will guarantee every man a job based on his talents and training. Legislation which will do away with the myth that the ownership of a public place of business carries any moral or legal right to reject a customer because of the color of his hair or of his skin. We dedicate ourselves to guarantee by legislation that all American citizens have integrated education and the right to vote on reaching the legal age. We dedicate ourselves today to securing a minimum wage which will guarantee economic sufficiency to all American workers, and which will guarantee a man or a woman the resources for a vital and healthy family life, unencumbered by uncertainty and by racial discrimination. A good job for every man is a just demand, and becomes our motto. But we are gathered, too, to dedicate ourselves to building a people, a nation, a world which is free of the sin of discrimination based on race, creed, color, or national origin. A world of the sons of God, equal in all important respects. A world dedicated to justice and to fraternal bonds between men. Those of us gathered here before the Lincoln Memorial and those of us gathered in witness around the nation pledge ourselves that now is the time we respond to the demand of our conscience. Now is the time we grasp the ideal our faiths and our constitution hold before us. There is no turning back. In a decade or less, we will have done our utmost to have secured a community of justice and fraternity and love among us. 
or we will have laid the seeds of our own destruction.